Welcome indeed, legends, to this first part of a seven-part series that aims to help you on your journey to fly a radio-controlled helicopter. And we start off with a sim, and I really wish I'd done that many years ago, um, but we start off with the sim, and this series we're going to be using AccuRC2. Now, in the video description, there are a couple of links there. Pop along to those uh, videos and watch them. That will help you set up your transmitter. Uh, for this first video, we're going to be using the OMP M2 um, helicopter, which is a fairly small helicopter, and likely that for many people starting off on this on their journey, uh, it's the sort of first time helicopter that people will buy. You can buy it ready to fly, out of the box, complete with its own controller. But there are some things that we need to do in the uh, sim to make it work. And as I said, there are links down below. Please visit those. Outside of that, the aim of this video is to introduce to you what the sticks do um, and to understand the mechanics behind what is going on. Um, and you you pass this at a risk, to be fair. Um, you've really got to understand what is going on with the helicopter. So let's, without further ado, visit the workshop and understand what's going on in the sim and how that translates into the actual machine. So here we are in the workshop now and um, there is our OMP M2 hobby, lovely little thing, um, don't let the size of it fool you, it is, uh, it, is, um, it is a beast. OMP M2 hobby and the S2 Goose Guy, very very similar helicopters. Okay, when you load up your helicopter, you will have lots of different options here uh, for the component parts. And you can change these out and change different parameters simply by clicking on them and then changing the parameters that are presented. Try to refrain from doing that uh, first off. When it loads up a helicopter, it loads up the component parts which are matched um, pretty much close as damn it to the real thing. And therefore, you should leave it alone. But there are some things you do need to change and we're going to cover them now. The first thing is that on the ESC here, you're going to click that and you're going to make sure that it says here, Governor Mode VTX Throttle. That's right, VTX throttle. This means the virtual transmitter throttle mode, and we will cover that in a minute. Uh, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go into the fly barless unit, and you're going to change the fly barless mode uh, to, from whatever it is to sport. Now look, there are four options, and each of these options will simply change parameters on these five settings you see here. The higher up we go, i.e. 3D, the faster the agility on the servos, um, and that means that the helicopter will move that much quicker. My view is that sport is a good start state to start on, even though there is a beginner state. And the reason for this is that the beginner state just makes those servos move a little bit slower, which does create it to be a little, which does make it a little bit more stable, but at the same time can lead you into a full sense security. So my advice is put it on sport mode. It's a very happy medium. So that's the first thing we've got to do. We've got to change the ESC to be virtual transmitter for the throttle and we need to change the fly barless unit to sport. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to press, uh, we're going to sl click these sliders for virtual transmitter and the visual transmitter. The visual transmitter is this box that we can see here with these two separate sections and the virtual transmitter is this uh, box here with the selection options and that's what we're going to look at now. So we can close this window and now we can focus on uh, setting up the uh, virtual transmitter so that it works with our, um, our our real transmitter that we've got in our hands. Now as I said the caveat is that you must have visited the previous videos in the video description in order to set your helicopter up, helicopter up properly uh, to work with the um, sim and what we're going to do now is just change some fine fine tune some settings for the throttle. Okay, 
So clicking on the throttle curve area here, um, we need to understand a couple of things before we make any changes. The first thing is that the box on the left hand side represents what we call the collective or the left stick. And as we move this stick throughout its full length of travel, it is now at the very top, that is directly correlated to the position along the throttle axis here. Uh, the position where it is now is zero, which is here. Um, and as we move the throttle throughout the range, for example, that's at 50%, then that is representative on the throttle curve um, here, uh, this, this dot here, the, the third dot, i.e. 50%. So you can see, can't you, that wherever we put the throttle, that it, it, di it directly, or wherever we put the collective, sorry, it directly correlates to along the full range of the throttle curve. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the zero one here and we're going to make we're going to move this slider all the way down to zero and this means that when we start the helicopter will not be active there will be no power going to the motor. Then the second one we're going to click on that and then we're going to move the slider to about 65% and then continue that for the third, fourth and fifth which directly correlates as 0%, 25% about there 50% about there, 75% about there, and 100% there. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on RPM 2, and now we're going to do exactly the same again, but this time we're going to increase them all to 75, and this means that when we flick our switch to become idle up as it's called or flight mode or aerobatic mode or acrobatic mode whatever you want to call it it means that wherever we put our uh, our left collective our left stick then it throughout any of the range of the full travel there will always be a consistent throttle all the way through a consistent rpm cool so that's all we have to do to set up our um, our virtual transmitter. Now that we've done this, let's now defer to National Geographic in this short video which will give you a demonstration and description of the collective, the cyclic, the rudder um, and how that works with the helicopter. When we come back, we'll then talk some more about this. A helicopter generates lift from its rotating blades. Adjusting the collective pitch changes the angle of all blades simultaneously allowing the helicopter to increase or decrease in altitude. Adjusting the cyclic pitch will change the angle of each blade at specific parts of its rotation, creating more lift on one side, leading to forwards, backwards, and side-to-side -side motion. Changing the pitch of the tail rotor blades rotates the helicopter left or right, like a rudder. Thus, you need to master a combination of cyclic pitch, collective pitch, and tail rotor pitch for successful flight. Left stick is known as the collective. It has three functions. The first function is to change the blade pitch angle of the main blades. The second function is to act as, in this case, a throttle, um, and which has two steps. A first step, which provides zero RPM at zero um, at the zero setting, and the second uh, way is via flicking a switch, in this case, to idle up, will give us f uh, a set power across the full range that we are setting uh, on our controller. And the third function that it provides is a rudder. Left makes the nose turn to the left, right makes the nose turn to the right. Our right stick is the cyclic, forward and backwards is known as the elevator, left and right is known as the aileron. Okay, let's see in the final part of this video how this translates to when we actually start the helicopter up. Okay, so remembering that we're on the lowest setting, the RPM1, and we're on the lowest setting on the collective, as we just give a slight amount of power, and as we increase the collective, and therefore the speed of the rotors are going to spin even faster, and we can see that in the top right hand corner there at 50% the helicopter is quite light on its skids and it's going around at 6000 rpm the smaller the helicopter the faster the blades turn the bigger the slower um, moving to the left the helicopter's nose will move to the left and we can see that there 
um, remembering only a tiny amount and the faster the further we further we move it around the quicker it will turn um, and if we were to give some more collective now and therefore increase the speed and therefore the angle of the rotor blades the helicopter will rise on the left hand on the right hand side we can see the collective you only have to give us tiny amount and the helicopter will still keep rolling in that direction um, if I now just put this amount in look the helicopter is still moving still moving I can let go and it will very very slowly uh, come back or even as it's the case now it will stay there very realistic actually um, and moving to the right it will come back again it will not recenter itself if we go over to the right it's going to stay there um, now it's only staying there because I've gone back to the center but if I was to if I was to just do a t tiny wee bit of forward now and keep it there notice the helicopter is still moving it's going to keep going until it smashes the rotor blades and it will stay like that and eventually then settle down very very slowly so there we go so that is the collective and the uh, and the cyclic now as we reduce our collective remembering of course that reducing the, the collective and reducing the throttle will mean that the helicopter will um, re, you know stop the power to the motors etc because we're on RPM 1 if we were on RPM 2 then even at zero where we are now would be full power and I'm going to switch to that now it'd be quite loud so I'll, uh, I'll, I'll flick to RPM 2 now a point to note um, was that it was quite loud and you you heard that sort of you know thump that it was given because um, the rotors were moving around at full power at full negative pitch you know minus 11 degrees for example and that's what that noise is it's the air being beaten into submission uh, this helicopter is not going to turn itself off until we change back to the rpm1 mode or flight mode So there we go, now you know what does what, now you know what does what, you should be flying this beauty in no time whatsoever and on the next video we will be covering how to hover uh, this helicopter and at the end of that video you should have all the understanding you need to be able to hover your helicopter which is the absolute most important aspect of flying any helicopter is being able to hover it if you can hover it then you can pretty much put it wherever it is that you need it to be um, if you can't hover a helicopter there's no point progressing hovering is the most important lesson to understand on top of the basic fundamentals of what is happening mechanically and our controller and the uh, what the two sticks do the cyclic and select and collective excellent join me on part two then where we'll cut straight in and uh, we'll start learning some hovering techniques in different orientations and some top tips to uh, help you along that journey before progressing further in the series till next video then take care hope that was useful bye bye